Anytime a sewing machine starts to give you some fits, it's time to get underneath the throat plate and clean it out. We're working on the Singer Heavy Duty 4452 sewing machine, but this is very similar to a lot of different Singer machines uh, out there. And it's something that you need to do when things go wrong. So if you're noticing some skip stitches, some a machine that's acting a little louder than it used to, as you sew, it lint and dust is created and hangs out underneath the throw plate. We're gonna walk you through all the steps for cleaning it and even putting a little oil down in the bobbin area. So start by taking a pair of scissors and I'm cutting the thread up at the spool and then pulling the thread out the needle. So if you are ever pulling the thread up the other direction as you take a spool of thread off your machine and you notice there's a lot of lint in this area, all you're doing is taking that lint up into the machine. So if you can clip the thread at the top, pull it down through, you are not uh, adding any extra uh, lint that shouldn't be where it's going. Uh, next, let's just go ahead and take the needle out. This is a screwdriver that comes with your machine. So if you wanna just go ahead and give that a little loosen and take the needle out. If it's been a while since you have changed needles, well, that's gonna be another thing that will make a difference. If you touch the little lever at the back of the foot, it will drop it off. That will just give us a little bit more room once again to get in. Let's take the bobbin out next. And voila, we are free of all the thread. Now take your screwdriver and loosen the screws that are holding this throat plate on. Once they're loosened, I can usually take my finger and then just spin them off the rest of the way. So underneath here, here's the thing that you are probably going to be surprised is seeing how much lint is built up in and underneath this plate. One thing you do not want to do is blow into the machine or use canned air. Don't blow any of this further in. You have a brush that came with this machine. We are going to start to brush all of that out. Next, you can take your bobbin case. That's the black part here. Give it a little wiggle. And you'll notice it's kind of tight in here, but if you kind of lift it up and then twist it out, it will come out from underneath this little kind of holder area. Now, let me point out one thing here is there is a very large hole in the middle of this, and it sits directly over the center of the hook area. So this is considered your bobbin case. This is the hook. There's a sharp part right here that comes around and creates your your stitch. Every time you take one stitch, this rotates around two times. It's pretty incredible how a sewing machine even works. But you can take a little drop of oil and put a drop of oil down through the middle of that section. Now you might even think that there's a little piece of lint sitting in the middle. That is actually the wick a wick that actually can take the oil down through and to where it goes. Now you don't even have to take um, this all apart to put a little drop of oil there. You'll notice that even if you just take your bobbin out, that hole is accessible to where the oil can be dropped in. Now getting this all back together, after you've cleaned, you're gonna notice there's lint everywhere. Remember, we're bringing and brushing it out. If you have a little uh, vacuum cleaner that's got a small crevice tool, go ahead and get in there and suck out all the lint. Fabrics that are linty are going to be like fleece and flannel. Just regular cotton is a, another fabric that is going to leave a lot of residue. So the more you get in here and take care of this, the more you won't have issues with your machine. So two things, when we're putting it back together, you're gonna to kind of put this kind of open part facing directly towards the back of the machine. And this little kind of small heel here is going to sit and bounce against this spring. So when it is all in here correctly, you will find that everything is lined up, but you are gonna kind of have to wiggle that back in there so it sits um, at the proper location. So don't sew until everything is back into place. As you maneuver it back into position, you'll notice the little heel bumps up against the spring 
and everything's kind of tucked in right along the ridge. So it should have a little bit of wiggle. You should see everything is nice and flush and you'll know that you have it in there correctly. Go back and lay in the throat plate and let's add those screws that we took out. Sometimes what I'll do is, is not get these super tight. Uh, I mean, tight enough, but you don't have to crank them down that way. They're easy enough to kind of remove next time. I usually find myself after every oh, three to five bobbins is needing to clean out underneath this throat plate. So depending on the fabrics, once again, that you're using, we're gonna put our bobbin back in, make sure it clicks into the little six o'clock area for that tension. And I'm gonna leave the door off until I completely rethread the machine. Well, let's set the foot right about here and then lower it down so it can click onto that bar. Now it's reattached. And the last thing to do, I always put my needle in last. And you know what? We have that clever little um, holder for our needle insertion. So let's go ahead and use that. Drop the needle down the flat side to the back and then lift that right on up and that will help hold it in place and then tighten the screw on the right. So keep in mind that you wanna tighten this but not over tighten it. So you just wanna get it snug so the needle doesn't come out. Let's re-thread the machine. I am gonna make sure my presser foot is up when I thread the machine all the way through so I know that it's getting into all of the grooves. And then depending on my next fabric, I'll be placing the right needle in. So it's a little heavier fabric, put a heavier needle in. A little lighter weight fabric, put a little smaller needle in. Let's hold on to the thread and then take one full stitch. This will also kind of confirm that I put everything back together correctly. Bring up that bobbin thread and of course a little test sewing it's gonna make all the difference now about the oil just head over to your local soy machine store they are going to be able to get you some basic soy machine oil but oh everything sounds so much better once you've cleaned this and then once a year go ahead and have your machine serviced at your local soy machine store that's going to keep this machine running in top notch condition so if changing your needle quality thread cleaning out down below and you're still having some issues that's usually when the rest of the machine needs a little extra attention and they will go ahead and service the machine oil all the parts that we can't see. There's a lot of moving parts behind all the covers here and they will be able to get your machine running smoothly. So definitely every three to five bobbins clean and put a little drop of oil in there, put a new needle in and you should be good to go.